Hello and welcome to another episode of Pokemath. Here in episode number 60, we're going to be taking a closer look at Misfortune Sisters. And more particularly, we're going to be taking a look at some probabilities regarding this Misfortune Sisters card. A card I really like, especially also because it figures in my Full Art Supporter collection, but also because I recently used it for an exam. Yeah, actually I used a lot of Pokemon things for my exam in university, but in this specific case, I got the honor to give a course at the Honors College. And more specifically, I believe it was called a broadening module, so a small two ECS course called Combinatorics and Randomization in Card Games, which means that I was giving free lectures and an exam assignment. In this particular course, I would say, um, yeah, the exam consists of a group presentation. Each of the groups here, which will be with three or four students in this particular case, it's a small course, it's Honors College. They will be given one of these four different topics, Pokemon, Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh! or Flesh and Blood. Each of the groups will have to prepare then a presentation from which that will be the graded assessment for this course. It was uh, quite a fun experience and uh, you could think about what are we even discussing in such a course. Uh, in these three lectures, we went first over some basic probabilities. Lecture number two, we went over the hypergeometric distribution, one we're going to be applying here today. And the third and final lecture, we looked at randomization in the terms of the shuffling. For people who may have seen it earlier, I gave, gave actually this one online live for everybody to see. It figures on one of my old, uh, a part of it at least, on one of my old episodes of Pokemon. I believe it was episode number five. I maybe should redo that one day and really go into the details, but uh, I hope I'll be giving this course in the future as well, because it was really a lot of fun and I learned a lot myself and I also hopefully, hopefully the students learned a lot. For today, actually we're going to be taking a look at one of the questions I gave the students, which you may have guessed it, is about Misfortune Sisters. So more specifically, we're going to be looking at one of the Pokemon presentation questions. One more thing I would like to say is that each group actually got five questions they had to solve for these uh, presentations. First question for all the groups was to explain their given card game and what set them aside from the other card games in this pool. For instance, Pokemon, one of the things that really sets them aside from the other card games is the notion of prize cards. And also, to be a little more specific, you also talk about the mulligan system may be different. There's many details actually sets Pokemon quite much aside from Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Flesh and Blood and any other card games for that matter. Question two, three, and four were specific questions, say uh, probability-wise, shuffling, or other things. You may have seen on my Twitter or previously when I gave the course things I discussed here. Could be anything from pile shuffling to riffle shuffling to mass shuffling, all these different things. Um, and also applications of the hybrid geometric distribution, which we're going to be talking about today. The fifth question was the really fun one. Each group could simply just make up their own question. That is, that uh, find something specific for Pokemon, Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Flesh and Blood, whichever you had, and solve it. So the more complicated you made it, and you know, more creative, impressive, whatnot, the points would differ depending on that. So it was really, really fun, and I'll definitely try to be doing that in the future again. But let's dive into the specific topic for today, which is today's question. One of the specific questions I gave the Pokemon group was, namely, well, question three in their case, Please study the card, Misfortune Sisters. The one you see over here, you probably know it already, but let's go over it again. In this case, what are the probabilities of discarding 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 items from your opponent's deck? Apologize for any grammar errors that may be here, but grammar's not my thing, but we'll get there. So they can get up to five points for this. Not important here. We're just gonna look at one potential way to solve it. I must say for the group specific solution, that was quite impressive, they really, went one step further, I'm going to be showing the much simpler way I first had in mind. We can also discuss a lot of different things, and if you have any other additions to how you would go about solving this, feel free to put it in the comments section below. That's, I guess, what we have it for. Let's look specifically at this card and what the question will be. Zoom in a bit. Let's look at the text here. So what does the card say? Say, we look at the top five cards in my opponent's deck, then we choose any number of item cards you find there, and your opponent, and you discard them, and your opponent, well, shuffles the remaining cards in. Please note here, you may discard any number. That means, that means that if you see four items, you don't have to discard four. And you could think about, it. are there any situations where I actually want to let my opponent keep the items? Sure, because what if they're just junk cards that they don't want to draw later in the game? It could be you use it, you see some 
battle VIP passes later in the game and they're really no use for them, you actually would let them stay in the deck. Unless you're of course aggressively going to try and mill them out, then of course you just blindly would discard as much as you can get. But sometimes for more control aspect as well, you can also give them a situation where they only get, say, pretty crappy cards, right? Then they're stuck with it, right? That's one other thing you could look at. But let's just look at the probabilities in this particular case. How would I solve it? I would go about using the hypergeometric distribution. That was at least the idea based on what we did in the course. And of course, I did episodes on this before, so we're gonna be using concepts from there. We're gonna be going pretty briefly over it here. If you wanna learn more about it, that's the place to be. Now, it looks like this in this very simple form. I'm gonna explain each of these components, but I would like to, I always break it up into three components for my students. The first one is all possible ways of drawing, say, X, in this particular case, items out of M possible items. So you can already think about X, well, that's the zero to five, say, because that's the probability you want to calculate. M is the, say, set of possible items remaining. We'll get back to that in a moment. The other thing is simply just all possible ways of drawing N minus X other cards in the remaining deck. So say all the non-item cards, because when you're playing Misfortune Sisters, there's basically two types of cards popping up when you see them, items or not items. That's it, right? You could, of course, segment into many other things, but for this purpose here, it's items or no items. And finally, of course, we look at, you divide by this, you say all possible ways of drawing n unordered cards from a deck of n cards. So there's also another thing that comes in here. There's a few things we have to think about. Of course, the little n here, so the lowercase n, would just be five because Misfortune Sisters looks at five cards. As I may have already indicated, we need to make some assumptions here. And of course, one of the things um, you would have to assume here is what are the number of cards left in my opponent's deck when I play this. And as the game progresses, that number will change, of course. I believe my students, they try to do each of the ends and solve for everything. That's very impressive. You didn't have to do it, but it's nice to show. Although I believe the boundary is not correct, but that's besides the point here. In this particular case, you would just have to assume a number. You can always change that. Similarly, you have to assume how many items are left. That can be incredibly hard, of course, and in, in a game you sit there, it's really hard to get that precise, of course, because you're just guessing. But often you have situations with open deck lists, or if you're playing a best of three, or you're playing on day two, you already played the opponent, or you happen to know the stand of the deck, you have a much better guess. But it's just gut feeling at this point, right? But we can still just assume a number here. And indeed, the assignment text for the exam here said this following thing. You can you feel free to make any assumptions you need to in order to answer the above questions, right? In this particular case, we need those two assumptions. Number of cards left in your opponent's deck and number of items left. And then we can go ahead and try to solve it for a particular set of numbers. So we need to try and see, okay, what is the probability of hitting zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So we have to solve this five times essentially. And of course we need to use this here. So the X here will become zero to five. For this purpose here, just to try and solve it, let's assume my opponent has 20 card left in the deck. That's a number of least we can always count during the game because it's public information. So you can always just count your opponent's deck, unless the rules change in the meantime. And you can then assume that there are 10 items left. I put on which uh, letters they are here. So the uppercase N will be the number of cards left in their deck. So we can put in the formula up here. And the number of items left will be uppercase M, which is the number of items left. So we can just put that in the formula as well. That seems okay, right? And of course, lowercase n is five because with Misfortune Sisters, you look at top five. So you're drawing five from their deck, essentially, their opponent's deck. So we have all the things we need to plug in. So now I shifted numbers. We can go a little back and go a little forth. So you can see again, this is the numbers, how it would look. And you see we have just x left and we solve it in this case six times one for zero one for one two three four and five and we get the following probabilities displayed here i just changed x solved them please feel free to solve them i round them in this case into three decimals these are represented in decimal numbers that means for instance with x equal to zero the probability indeed in this case of hitting zero items we 1.6 percent Following up, it will be 13.5% to hit exactly one. Two will be 34.8, same with three, four. It is a nice symmetric distribution because the numbers are chosen very, very consciously, say 20 and 10, it kind of makes sense, right? Just to make it easy. 
you can always try use the same formula formula here uh, there's online tools for this you can also go in excel and use the combin formula combinations formula to give each of these binomial coefficients to get the hypergeometric distribution out so it's things you can also try and solve for yourself check the previous episodes if you want more details on that of course just to double check all these probabilities add up to one because that's the way the world works or the way probabilities work and indeed you can just try for different numbers this is just done for one particular case and then you can just try and alter this and see how the probabilities move around make a grid you can make a graph just to show how this actually works out it's quite an interesting question just to see how you go about it and especially for these students here in my exam basically all of them they never really played any card games so that was really interesting to see how they react to be presented to hey guys this is a new card game you probably never heard about before or you may have heard but you never tried to play it before so they got to learn a lot of cool things we can also ask just an addition, it's not part of the question, but you can just go one step further if you want to and just calculate the mean. And uh, in this particular case, the mean of a hypergeometric distribution is given by the following formula. You can even Wikipedia this one if you want to. So it's lowercase n times m divided by m n m n. Woo, English today is not going very well. But in this case here, you can just plug in the numbers and you get two and a half. It should also somewhat be obvious in this case here, given the numbers that I chose. But the moment you alter this here, then this formula becomes more relevant because it's probably very difficult to just calculate it from top of your head. I guess. Otherwise, just double check with your calculator. Always fine. Now, and that's, uh, that's exactly how you could go about solving this question here. And I think it was really fun for the exam and really interesting for the students. But there's a few comments I need to make here. And this is more back to not the point of exam, but more like what about us as players, judges, whatnot, right? What can we note here? With the introduction of Scarlet and Violet, I will argue that this card is going to get worse uh, uh, up front, right? We don't know how many items uh, decks are going to play yet. That's for the future to know. But there's one thing that makes it worse, and that's because Pokemon tools will now get their own subcategory. Why is that actually even important here? Well, it lowers the category of items, right? So previously, right now, you could just look at top five. You could hit a choice, choice belt, choice band, choice belt. Parasol, that's the one where everybody's playing, <laughs> or anything. Hit any item, hit any tools, right? The point is, you can no longer hit those because with the new introduction here, from as far as I understand, also tools that are currently items will become tools. They'll be errata into tools. So they're no longer a target for Misfortune Sisters, arguably making the card worse. So that's one thing. So summing up here today, what did we actually learn? Well, we looked at the probability of discounting one, two, three, four, and five items playing as Fortune Sisters. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Pokemath. And uh, if you have any comments, feel free to post them below. And uh, I hope to see you back for another class here in Stefan's Classroom. Bye, everyone.